Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us enter into the presence of God in the silence of our hearts. Brother, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You will send to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, you are sitting at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, glance and protect your church, and since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl, who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram. I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king. Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned away in anger and left. But his servants came up 
and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? And all the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go to the in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O oh God, my God. The thirst is my soul for the living God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and blenders redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue, at Nazareth. Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent but only to a widow in Zephyrath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elijah the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong, but he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. My brother and sister, today Jesus Review uh, a somewhat 
mysterious passage. Because what he's saying is a prophet is not welcome in his own house. And it's, it's, it's somewhat, you know, too innocent. Because what, 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 what does a prophet do? What, what is the meaning of a prophet? Prophet, more than any, anyone, anything, is not about a person that predicts the future. According to Pope Bandit in his, uh, in his first book, he redefined the meaning of prophet. He said a prophet is a person who put everybody in contact with him or her into an encounter with the living God. And that is the true meaning of the prophecies. It's not about the future, but it's about encounter. And Jesus Christ himself revealed that mysterious part of prophecy. And why would it not be received by the people close to him? It's just because familiarity. Familiar destroy the mysterious. Being familiar. Because what Jesus is saying is that the people in his own town doesn't see him, doesn't appreciate his message. He only sees Jesus, they only see Jesus, the son of Joseph and the son of Mary. A familiar face that they see and appreciate, but they don't appreciate what it is that he's saying, or his prophecy. That is so apt into our own spiritual life, because familiarity will slowly and over time destroy the sense of the mystery. It will always destroy the sense of a mystery. So watch out for that familiarity sense. Watch out for how you encounter the mystery. Because will lead to a habitual reaction. Whenever you encounter your life, whenever you encounter your practice of the spiritual life, going to mass, but we can forget that there's always a mystery behind what we do. We tend to overlook it and not remind ourselves to encounter the mystery of God. Well learned. This is a well repeat. Because as human beings, we tend to forget in our day to day. United as the body of Christ, we offer our petitions to God our Father. That the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all the ends of the earth may know the saving power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who experience rejection or failure may find hope and strength in the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. That the grace of God's word and the sacraments may transform all of us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all the faithful departed may rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Lumen Madriaga. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, you sent your Son to save us. Look with favor on the petitions we now offer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so the, we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop, his brother Bishop Timothy and Thomas, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under end of my robe, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great.
May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you, graciously purify them, and give them instruction, that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangels.